The new uniforms are out, and you're not going to believe which ones I like the best. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Thursday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day on a Thursday, April 18th into Friday, April 19th. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcast. That includes on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. And of course, on the audio side, pod, uh, uh, Google, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We appreciate you checking us out. Locked On Lions for this evening is brought to you by our friends at monopoly go i admit it i have a competitive side and it is a and i'm a big fan of monopoly go the mobile hit twist on classic monopoly so join your friends and download monopoly go right now for free on the app store or google play you can follow us on twitter at dairy speaks at locked on lions on twitter matt dairy facebook fan page and again on our locked on lions youtube channel we got to talk about the new uniforms i waited to record tonight because the Lions had their big unveiling party uh, this evening down at Ford Field. And of course, during the day, for some odd reason, Fanatics leaked the uniforms. It was all over social media. So you weren't sure going down to Ford Field tonight. For those of you season ticket members uh, going down there to see the 222 show, you weren't sure uh, if those were the right uniforms, wrong uniforms, whatever. But regardless, the new uniforms are out. And the Lions have three basic new uniforms or three new looks. And yes, they are bringing back the um, the throwback the uniforms, the classics, which I like the best, to be quite honest with you. You've seen those, the all blues, the all grays, uh, with the grays, no stripes. But the Lions have three uniforms. I'm going to put up, if you're watching on YouTube, some pictures in a second. But the first one that they've got, uh, the home uniform they're calling One Pride, which you've got the blue, you've got a gray stripe, you've got the gray numbers, and you've got silver pants with a blue stripe down the front. Now, the numbers and the lettering are white this time as opposed to gray. So um, they're calling those home uniforms One Pride. Modern take on the most iconic Detroit Lions uniform, uh, uniform ever won. In refreshed Honolulu blue, the home jersey welcomes back a classic white number font and is paired with pants in true silver, the way it was meant to be. New shoulder and pant striping borrows from the racing stripes used on the Ford Mustang. Oh, of course they're talking about Ford. Shocker. With both notably, uh, and, bo and both notably include the return of white accents. Uh, the inside collar is inscribed with one pride in honor of our team's passionate and frenzied fan base that packs Ford Field to create one of the most intimidating game day atmospheres in the NFL. Uh, I like the all blues myself. This is blue with gray. It's not bad. I don't love the stripes. Uh, the road uniforms are calling the 313. <coughs> These are the white uniforms with Detroit on the front. The blue uniform doesn't say anything on it, but the white uniform says Detroit across the chest. Let me put up a photo of these so you guys can see this for those of you watching on our Lockdown Lions YouTube channel. There you go. You see the Detroit on the Hutchinson 97 jersey for those of you watching on YouTube. Um, very, very interesting that they're going that route with Detroit. Um, it's fine. It's not bad. I prefer the all whites. These are the white and blue. Road uniform features a bright white jersey with classic blue numbers outlined in silver to be worn with either solid blue or white pants. First time in team history, the Lions will proudly wear Detroit across their chest on the road, keeping home close to the heart. And on the inside, it's inscribed with 313. Again, blue stripes with a little silver trim. The surprise to me is the alternate uniform, the Motor City Muscle which is an all-black uniform. And I'll be completely honest with everybody. I really like these. I said I wanted no part of the black uniforms, but look at these helmets. A blue, a, a darker blue helmet with a black bubbles, the lion logo, and a black stripe. Those helmets are killer. 
The black uniforms are sweet. I got to be honest. The all black look is awesome. I, I told you I didn't want black uniforms back. It reminds me of bad Lions teams quarterbacked by John Kitna. Uh, the last time the Lions had black uniforms, they went 0-16. But none other than Dan Campbell went to Rod Wood a few years ago and said, can we bring black back the black uniforms? And Rod told him, yeah, sure. Go win the division first. Well, the Lions just won the division. And now the black uniforms are back. And um, I like them. Those are my favorite ones. Uh, on the website, it says, heavily influenced by the grit and swagger our team brings to the field, this alternate uniform reintroduces black to the Lions on-field closet. A reinterpretation of a jersey worn in the late 1990s, early 2000s by former players, including head coach Dan Campbell. It bears the Lions word mark across the chest so whoever lines up across from us knows what they're in for a long day. Um, the continued use of the blue trim inside the collar ensures that whether worn at Ford Field or on the road, a blue collar mentality remains a constant Inscribed with Motor City, the collar also pays tribute to Detroit and the Ford family's iconic place in American history. Ah, oh, golly gee. I like the black uniforms the best. Uh, Lions are bringing back the throwbacks as well. Likely wear these maybe once. Those are the blue with no stripe and the gray pants with no stripe. I love the throwbacks. Those are my favorite. Um, all in all, I think it's fine. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm going to do 20 minutes tonight on the uniforms, but the bottom line is this. They look good. Players are excited. Fans are excited. I, I wish they'd get rid of the stripe and just go with the cleaner look. I love the stripes on any of the uniforms. The Detroit across the front is fine. It's, it's okay. Um, I like the blues the best because they're, they're clean. They're clean-ish. There's less on there. I don't want Lions on there or Detroit, but whatever. And the black ones are sweet. I'll, I'll be honest. And again, I'll show you this helmet. Um, I absolutely love this helmet. I love this helmet, the blue helmet. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, here's what the blues look like with that stripe on the side. I just think it would have been better with no stripe, but they're clean looking. They're nice. And the fans are eating this up with a spoon and uh, give the lions credit. All right. We're a week out from the draft. One week away, they had a big event downtown. And uh, they even had a video ready today, the Lions did, of Aleem McNeil chastising the folks that leaked the uniforms earlier in the day. And that was fanatics um, that did that. So <laughs> whatever. But the All Blacks are sweet. I, I got I to gotta be honest. I don't know how often they're going to wear them. Um, I really, really like them. And I love them with the helmet that they have as well. Uh, by the way, the WCF patch that the Lions wore on their uniforms is gone. They're now going to have a WCF William Clay Ford patch on their helmets um, starting next year on the back of the helmet. But uh, good job by the Lions. All in all, they're fine. I'm not telling you they're the best uniform. I'm not telling you they're the worst. I would have preferred no stripes. But my favorites of all are the all-black uniforms. Um, and I've heard rumors of a Lions-Rams Monday night game to start the season. Imagine the Lions coming out in all black uniforms on Monday night football to start the season at home. That would be absolutely cool. Um, but all in all, I like them. I don't love them. So what are your thoughts on it? Love to see your comments on YouTube, on Twitter, and everywhere else. I think they're fine. I think they're good. They're good. I'm not going crazy, but uh, they're pretty cool. Everybody's excited. And... Uh, Sheila Ford Hamp was there tonight at the event downtown. She made an interesting comment uh, this evening down at Ford Field. We will tell you what Sheila had to say when she took the microphone. We'll do that coming up next right here on Locked On Live. And Locked On Lions brought to you by my uh, Monopoly Go. I told you this yesterday, all right? We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. Halftime, the scoreboard's not looking good. You're feeling low. Not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game. 
pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as, po as I possibly can. Yes, that's right. It's the smash hit mobile game that has joined us on Lockdown Lions Monopoly Go. Let me tell you something. My wife is upstairs right now playing Monopoly Go on her phone. She absolutely loves it. You can compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks to the wrecking ball and charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and, and, uh, in, and uh, in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb a leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go right now. It's free on the App Store or at Google Play. Hope everybody's doing well. It is a Thursday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Got to give a shout out to my stepson, AJ, turned 21 today here on April the 18th. I cannot believe I've got a 23-year-old, a 21-year-old, a 19-year-old, but I do. I'm an old man. Uh, what can you say? Um, all right. So tonight at the event, you had Dan Campbell there, Chris Spielman, Elaine McNeil, and others, Kirby Joseph. We'll tell you about him coming up momentarily. And also Sheila Ford Hamp. And she took the microphone at the event down at Ford Field tonight and had a very interesting comment. And again, let's say this about Sheila. Of all the Fords and of all the owners that this organization has had, whether it was Mr. Ford, whether it's been Martha, and then, of course, handing the reins over to her daughter, Sheila. Sheila Hamp has done a terrific job. All right. Uh, we've heard your complaints about other sports owners in this town. Sheila has put excellent football people in charge. She has stayed out of the way. She has given resources to this organization that they've needed. And for the first time in a long time, all of us feel so positive about this football team. Tonight, Sheila kind of put her neck out on the line. She grabbed the microphone tonight and she said downtown, quote, as Coach Campbell said at the, as Coach Campbell said at the end of last season, that was phase one. The 2024 season is phase two. One of the goals for the 2024 season is at the end of the season, we will be hoisting the trophy. End quote. Wow. Hoisting the trophy, says Sheila. A little bold, a little uh, gutsy. Little stones there from Sheila. Which trophy are we talking about? Are we talking about the, uh, is it the George Hallis trophy winning the NFC? Are we talking about the Vince Lombardi trophy as Super Bowl champs? We know this, and I said this last night or yesterday on the show. The expectations are as high as they've ever, ever been for this football team. All right. Fans, some media types are saying Super Bowl or bust. I don't know if I'm ready to go that far because it's so difficult to get there. And the schedule this year is going to be very, very difficult. But I want to see continued success. I want to see this team back in the NFC Championship game. Then all bets are off. You just don't know. Maybe the Lions make the NFC title game again this year and they play Philly and Philly's just better. Or they play Dallas and Dallas is just better. Or they play San Francisco again and the Niners just are better. This past year, the Lions got very, very lucky, right? They faced a flawed Rams team at home. They faced a flawed Bucks team at home. They played the Niners. They played one heck of a first half. They dominated, and they led by 17 points. And then, of course, they let it slip away. I think this year's Lions team may win less games. They may win less than 12, but I think they're going to be deeper and better. And again, you got to stay healthy. Got to keep your quarterback upright in Jared Goff. Um, but to say tonight in front of all the fans, hey, we're hoisting the trophy is pretty, pretty big expectations for an organization that has never, ever been in a Super Bowl, ever. So I like it. I like that she's having fun with her coach. I like that they've lit, raised the bar. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Brad Holmes had to say in a second here earlier today in his pre-draft press conference, 
Because Brad Holmes, I thought, was very measured in a lot of things that he said today. Wasn't too overly cocky. Um, and I think this organization knows that they want sustained success over just going for it. Oh, the window's here. Let's just go for it and pr- trade up or do it. No. Brad Holmes wants sustain, sustained success on top of progress. And I think that's a good thing. And that kind of transitions me to the draft and what Brad Holmes is thinking um, in some of his comments earlier today. Um, number one, Brad Holmes said something interesting today. He said, when you're looking at the draft, you want to get every pick right. There are other GMs that say, I'm going to have a clunker or two. There's some that aren't going to work out. Brad Holmes flat out said today, the goal is to get every pick right, which I love. He loves the draft. He he really, he shouted out his college scouts today. He was talking about Hud, Hud Smith and this guy and that guy and 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 his, his area scouts. And um, I love that. They, the Lions do so much for the draft. And look, I'm not saying they do more than other teams or whatever else, but they really value it. And they've taken some really good players over Brad Holmes's first three drafts. And last year, what can you say? How can you argue against Jameer Gibbs, Jack Campbell, Sam Laporta, and Brian Branch as your first four picks? It's gold. Panay Sewell is one of the best right tackles in the league. Aiden Hutchinson is one of the best uh, edge rushers in the league. Sam Laporta is a top three tight end. The list goes on and on. Ify Melifonwu was a Brad Holmes draft pick. Um, Aline McNeil was a Brad Holmes draft pick. Third round. It's all good there. Holmes also said today that many mock drafts will have certain players that will be mocked to Detroit. We've talked about it. Whether it's 29, 61, whatever. Holmes said today the player has to be the right fit, that he and Dan Campbell talk about this all the time, and that not everyone can play here. What does that mean? Right fit and not everyone can play here. People have talked about, like, Troy Franklin, the wide receiver from Oregon, and there have been people that have told me he's not a lion. You know, um, uh, A.D. Mitchell from Texas. Big receiver, great hands, gets downfield. I've talked to some folks that say, eh, might not be a lion. Might not work hard enough. Might not run hard on every route. Might not. There's a certain element to the players that Brad Holmes picks that he thinks are a fit for here. Not that he doesn't think they're talented, but they've got to be the right fit. He also said today that he doesn't base the draft on the Super Bowl window, like I said before, sustainability, consistency. He's not, I don't think Brad Holmes is going to trade up in this draft. I don't think Brad Holmes is going to look up at a player and say, I've got to have this guy on my team desperately. I think he views these guys as players that he can build around and have four or five years with, as opposed to trying to hit some home run and mortgaging other picks to get there. When asked today, I think it was John Macaroon from uh, SI, all Lions asked him today about the cornerback class. It's no secret the Lions have worked out a bleep ton of cornerbacks uh, down in Allen Park for their 30 visits. Holmes did not go crazy today about the cornerback class. He called it a normal cornerback class. They like some guys, but it's pretty normal based on other years. Now, obviously, we well, many of us believe the Lions are going to take a corner at some point in this draft. Will they do it at 29? We'll see. There's a lot of good ones in the first round. Arnold, Wiggins, um, Dejean, Kool-Aid, all sorts of good ones. Uh, Mitchell from Toledo. But Brad called it a normal cornerback class. He did not want to classify it as something overly fantastic, which I thought was interesting. Brad Holmes was asked, what if? He wants to trade back at 29, and the fans are all there waiting for the pick. What's Brad Holmes going to do? I'm going to give you that answer and what he said today. Uh, Coming up next right here on Locked on Lions. (laughs) 
Hey, everybody. I uh, hope you're doing well. We've got to talk about our friends at Yahoo Finance. All right. And if you've been using Yahoo Finance, where well, they are a sponsor uh, today, which is awesome. And of course, we couldn't exist today without our friends at Yahoo Finance because everybody's got to take care of their money one way or another. Well, wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investments and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and have access and, and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all, right? You've saved, put some money away, you've researched, you've invested in all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses, and that is Yahoo Finance. For, over more, than, uh, for more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor, whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. The community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. Do yourself a favor. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. All right, so our buddy Larry Lays from the Associated Press today was down at the press conference in Allen Park for Brad Holmes. And he said, Brad, what are you going to do with all those fans down there? And what if you traded back? And have you thought about what would happen if you want to trade back from number 29 with the draft being in Detroit? And I thought Brad Holmes today was awesome in his answer. He was measured. He was friendly. He laughed. And he said, yeah. We've thought about this scenario. We're well aware of the situation, but I have to do what's best and what's right for the organization at number 29. And if that means we accumulate picks and trade back, I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize right now to the fans that have come down here. There's 150,000 people downtown and many are lined up down there by Greek town or Greek block. And the stage is set. Lions are on the clock. The fans are excited. Who are we taking? And then Brad Holmes might do, as he said, what is best for the organization. Trades back, adds some picks, and then the Lions don't even make a pick on the first night. But Brad said it's a tough call because he knows it's so important that the team and the, the organization is hosting this draft. It's going to show off the city, show off the, the organization. But he did say, look, let me say ahead of time, I will apologize to the fan base if I have to do this. But there's a chance based on, look, many general managers, and I've talked to a few people around the league over the week, and they've said, look, some GMs will say, we have 15 first round grades on players, and that's it. So when you get to 29, if there's nobody that Brad feels is worthy of a first round pick, but he feels he can get that same player that's on his board in the second round for less years and less money, he may trade back. So. I know Lion fans would be freaking out and my Thursday night podcast late night when I record it would be interesting, but there's a chance that, uh, that Brad Holmes punts on this pick and accumulates picks. We told you about the athletics mock draft where I think it was the Raiders that traded 44 and 71 to the Lions for 29. We'll see what happens. But I like that Brad was very transparent about it today. Uh, meantime today, Kirby Joseph was one of the players that was down there modeling the uniform, and he let it slip out that uh, he had some surgery this offseason. Taylor Decker said the same thing the other day. Kirby Joseph, according to Dave Burkett of the Free Press, um, had shoulder surgery this offseason, but should be ready for the start of the season. And this is one player that is extremely vital for this defense. You know, the more I watch tape, the more I look back on the season and think about it, Kirby Joseph, when he's playing center field, when he's ball hawking, when he's hitting guys, and I know that some people think he's a dirty player, but Kirby Joseph is a really good football player. And if he's not ready for the start of the year or he's not feeling good, that's a big loss because right now the Lions are extremely thin at safety. And so I would think that next week, I don't think it'll be Thursday, but either Friday or Saturday, Team is going to add some safety depth to, to the roster. 
But uh, Kirby Joseph kind of confirming or letting the cat out of the bag today that he did have a little bit of surgery on his shoulder. Um, feels all right and feels he'll be ready to start the season. But he's not a guy that we talk about enough on this show. I love the two young safeties this team has. Malafonwu, especially on the blitz, getting to the quarterback. He's an improved player and has earned a starting spot. They let C.J. Gardner-Johnson go because I think they feel like Ify Malafonwu can really play. But Kirby Joe's man, he just, on the back end, makes plays. But he started the year this past season. Here in 2023, a little slow. But uh, he's really a good football player, and he got better as the season progressed. And I think he and Malafonwu uh, are going to have a long tenure together on, on that back end. And now that the cornerback room is, is improved, maybe Joseph doesn't have to cheat a little bit more to one side or or anything else. But uh, keep an eye on that as Kirby Joseph uh, made that known um, today. By the way, we'll talk about this more tomorrow, but the Locked On NFL Mock Draft uh, is now out. Um, let me give you a little content on this. Um, it's available now. Find the ultimate six-episode series on Locked On NFL Draft to hear who the Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise. Live reactions from local college and football experts and even the fantasy football angle. Locked On NFL Mock Draft, available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And I will tell you this, based on the board and who was taken, I selected Kool-Aid McKinstry for the Lions at 29. And I admit it, I didn't love the pick. Probably you should have traded back. Uh, but that was my pick for Detroit. The cornerback from Alabama, Kool-Aid McKinstry. We'll have more on this tomorrow, uh, right here on Locked On Lions. So I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the uniform reveal and our thoughts on it. Thanks for making us your first listen. Checking us out wherever you get your podcasts on this Thursday edition of Locked On Lions.